All right, so this morning I have a lot to cover and I'm going to try to do it in a very short period of time. Um, today we are talking about Adler. This is a German company. They've been making axes since 1919 in Germany. And I believe that Adler should be discussed more uh, on YouTube in the in the axe community. I, I believe for the quality of product that they put out, uh, for the history that they have, for the care and the attention that they put into their products, I, I believe this is an extremely underrated company. And moreover, I believe that Germany, the German-speaking world, I'll even broaden it a little bit, uh, deserves more attention and credit for the work that they do. So Adler has been making axes since 1919, but that is just one axe company in Germany. Most countries are lucky if they have a company that makes some axes, but Germany has Adler, Bison, Ochsenkopf, and Helco work. They have four axe manufacturers in Germany, companies that, uh, that specialize in making axes. If you broaden it to the German speaking world, you have in Austria, Bieber Muller and Stubai. <laughs> so, I mean, that's six axe companies. The German speaking world right now, purely based on numbers, is completely dominating the axe manufacturing market. And when you look at their products, um, I mean, I, I think there's a reason why. I first became interested in this canoe axe several years ago. If, if I didn't mention it, this is the canoe axe. And, and to me, when I saw it, I just thought, holy cow, that is an axe. Um, it's beautiful. I love the black with the red accents, the hickory colors, uh, the laser engraving. This is gorgeous. I mean, this this is this is just absolutely beautiful. I think they nailed it, uh, and it doesn't just look good. So many things just look good, and then they disappoint in functionality. Um, this feels so good in the hand. I mean, it really does. Uh, this is what I'd call a Rhineland pattern. If you look at the bit here, it's not equidistant. There's a slant down in one continuous line and then towards the heel. And then the toe, the toe gradually sweeps up kind of like a bell. And what that allows you to do, it gives you as the user, a wonderful carving tip at the toe. If you're making feather sticks, I love making feather sticks with axes. I mean, it's just so natural. It's so much easier for making medium sized kindling, um, for carving tent stakes. If you're into bushcraft, I'm really into bushcraft. I love making things in the forest. Um, this is, this is your ax. You would love this pattern. Um, it is wide. I mean, look, one thing that I really do like about it here it is compared to the Grands Forest Brook, the Scandinavian Forest Axe. You get a wider bit, which really does help you in harder woods. The more I think about it, the more I think we ought to be purchasing axes based on the design of the axe. Is that too, is that too obvious? Is that too silly of me even to say? Uh, but but if, if you live in a forest like the Scandinavians live in, this would probably be a lot more suited to your needs. But if you live in an area where you have lots of hardwoods, you're probably going to want to gravitate more towards these German style axes. They'll hold up better. They just will. I've, I've tweaked this Grand's Force to where I'm very happy with it. But boy, um, did it take some work and trial and error. Um, whereas this axe will work just right out of the box for you. Great carver, great profile. Um, it, it's just a wonderful axe. It, it's the perfect weight, um, 1.35 pounds, but with a 19 inch handle. Uh, that can do just about anything. In fact, I would say that can do anything you need it to do um, if you are backpacking and uh, or, or hiking or canoeing, or maybe if you just want an axe that isn't too large to throw somewhere in your vehicle. Um, what I love about 19 inch handles is look at this. Here, here's my backpack. This is what I use. I got my strapping all goofed up here. There we go. Um, 19 inch axes fit 
perfectly in my backpack. Um, I can take this backpack out and I can throw my ax in it and then take it out when I need it. Um, if I'm going to be using a 24 inch ax, uh, it either hangs out the, out the side like this and I have to close the flap around the handle or I have to hang it on the outside, which I do not like doing because, um, it, it rain it rains a lot in Georgia. It, it, uh, it rains a lot and I don't like my tools rained on. So this canoe ax is fantastic. I love it. Um, I'll move on to now the short splitter. Um, you, you know, they call it the short splitter, not the small splitter. I, there's a reason for that. That was intentional because this is 2.7 pounds, 19.6 inches. Uh, that's 1,250 grams and 500 millimeters. Now, um, this is one thing that I, I'm really impressed by with these axes. Look at that. When they say 19.6 inches, they mean exactly 19.6 inches. Uh, same thing on this canoe axe. When they say 19.6, they mean exactly 19.6. It is down to the millimeter. To me, that is just quintessentially German. And the way the box was packed, I mean, there was, you, you couldn't shake it at all. The, the box was just perfect. No packing peanuts, no extra garbage in it. It was just nice, uh, heavyweight construction, you know, what, what would you call it? Wrapping paper, the brown paper, and everything was so tight and just, gosh, it was just so, it was just so German. I'm, if you've bought axes for, a, for, you know, um, for a while, you know, some people, you know, maybe you've even lost a few axes, uh, buying them on Etsy or eBay because somebody just threw them in a, you know, an envelope and sent it. I've lost axes that way. I hate it. Um, not, not with these. This was, everything about it was just packed perfectly. Now, look at this handle. God, look at that texture. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful handle. Uh, it has that same black, red, and, and hickory uh, tone to it. Absolutely gorgeous. Um, now at 2.7 pounds, this can split. I mean, that's almost a full size fouling ax. And, and if you look at this profile here, that is unbelievable. This can split. I'm curious to try it on some larger rounds because I do believe 2.7 pounds with this profile, you could do it 19.6 inches or not. This is more than capable to split the majority of of wood that I work with. Maybe I don't want to do it all day. Are there more efficient tools? Absolutely. But if I was going camping or canoeing or, or hiking out in the back country with a couple of my buddies, uh, I think it makes a lot of sense to have one guy carry the short splitter and everybody else can carry a hatchet or axe or, or whatever, whatever have you. Um, just having one guy with a splitting ax like this, I do believe would make the camping trip a lot more enjoyable. Now, specifically on the profile, look at that difference. Look at the difference here. This is the uh, short splitter versus the Scandinavian forest ax. And you know, they say Americans will measure anything. Uh, they will measure something in anything but the metric system. That's what they say. They'll measure anything, something in anything but the metric system. And, and because I think that's true, I, I'm going to go ahead and coin a special unit of axe measurement. Um, let's see. I'm going to, I'm going to call it the, uh, special Swedish units. That's what we'll do. So this Adler is, I'm going to say three times from cheek to cheek, the width of this Scandinavian forest axe. Therefore, it is three special Swedish units long. That is impressive. Um, this is just, just a wonderful axe. Um, now, I want to talk about this handle coating. I know I'm going to get questions about that. Um, to me, it I feel like it adds grip without the grit, maybe grip without the grit, if that makes sense. Um, it's not sharp. 
it's textured. Um, as I rub my hands on it, I don't get hot spots. And in fact, as I'm really kind of gripping it here, it, it does feel like it's kind of wearing in somewhat, if, if that makes sense. Not, not like it's rubbing off. You can see there's, n there's no residue left on my hands. But as I kind of wear my hand, and I wonder if this would soften over time. I haven't, used, I haven't even swung these. I wanted to keep them new for the video. Um, so that, that is, and you know what? Yes, yep, that's right, because I have... I have rubbed this one quite a bit, but really I haven't handled this short splitter at all and it feels significantly grippier. So I imagine as I use this handle, the grit will will kind of wear down and soften. And, and I think that would be perfect. Um, there's no lacquer on this paint. Um, lacquer will chew up my hands like like almost nothing else. Um, it, it's horrible. It, it just, it's grippy. It's just like... It's terrible. Um, th this isn't like that. There's no lacquer on this handle. Um, that's excellent. So I'm, but I'm curious to use it. I'll never know until I use it. Um, ju just I knew I was going to get some questions about that. You know, and I kind of wondered about that too. I was like, oh, there's a gripping texture on it. It makes sense because both of these axes, I imagine, would uh, have been designed for especially the canoe axe, for use in saturated environments. Um, if, if you're in a canoe, I mean, your hands will be wet from the oars and the water all day, and, and you know, maybe, maybe you'll want that, that grit to be a little, um, that grip to be a little, um, a, a little more firm than maybe a bare hickory. Now, I have my handles finished to where th they are grippy without, um, grippy without, um, with, without chewing up your hands, you know, I use a very kind of fine tuned mixture of pine tar, linseed oil. Um, I use oak bark tannins. I use just, I've tried all kinds of stuff and I've really kind of hit a sweet spot for where I like my handles to be. And I can use, and I have, I've used my handles in full rain and I still have a good grip. Now, sweat, sweat, you know, if I do really start to sweat and I get kind of the oils from everywhere that concentrate on my hands, then it will, then it will slip. But it takes a long time to get a grip like this on, on an ax. Um, so this, I think there, there is some merit to putting this texture on, uh, on your, your handles. And specifically for this canoe ax handle, um, this, this is gorgeous. I did want to highlight this is not a continuous shape, a continuous curve. Uh, what they've done right here, I love this. I love this so much. When I saw this detail, I was so impressed and so happy. Um, th they've actually created a little nest for your hand in here. It, it's like a little saddle for your hand. Um, it, it dips low in this valley here, and then it comes back up. You see, this is a relatively straight handle, but still, they added this little crook in here. That, that is fantastic. Now, tell me that just, I can see it on my screen. This is a beautiful axe. I, I love it. Um, they, they really nailed it. And adding this little, golly, it just, it feels... It feels right. I mean, it just fits. It fits my hand so well. And I have gravitated more and more towards this German style neck here. I really like it, especially for an axe like this that you'll use for carving or maybe detail work. Um, it's excellent. When you do activities like that, um, activities, that sounded strange. <laughs> you, you want a thicker handle. You really do. And there's no horn on it. Um, you look at, uh, here's my bison, same thing here, same thing here, how you, you, you have kind of a, and this is a little bit thicker, I, th this could be thinned down a bit, but it's, it's a larger axe, but it's the same principle, just an excellent area that you can choke up and, uh, and really get some good control. This canoe axe is, this is as close to the perfect handle for its size that, that I, I can imagine. I, there is literally nothing about this handle that I would change. Um, this is absolutely perfect uh, in my mind. Now, um, I wanna move on to these sheaths. Uh, these sheaths are incredible. Um, 
when, when I opened this box, I wish I could convey just how nice it smelled. I opened this box and it just, it smelled like, um, Man, it smelled like leather and and uh, and hickory. It golly, that was an experience. Um, I would pay to be the guy that just packages these boxes <laughs> at Adler because the the two sheaths in there were amazing. This is extremely high quality leather. I can tell you that right off the bat. The snaps fit nicely. Um, it's dressed on the edges. Um, it is finished on the inside. Uh, I would. Uh, this is either full grain leather or very, very lightly sanded top grain leather. Um, top grain leather is just, they, they sand that first kind of epidermis layer off that might have some scarring or imperfection. Um, this is very thick leather. I, I, I would bet that this is full grain. That would be, um, that'd be my guess. Um, now, I do like that the inside is finished. Um, <clears throat> on some axes, uh, axe masks where the inside is raw, uh, through just the friction of use, you can kind of get, um, you know, a little kind of like packing, like a cork packing and it sits there and that stuff's like a sponge for your sheath. And I end up kind of just having to, you know, knock it out every now and then y you won't have that problem here. The sheath fits nicely. It fits tight, but not too tight. Um, th there's no welt though. I, I think I would, man, I, I think I might even try to add a welt myself. You would lose this nice edge finishing here. Um, but uh, a welt, I, I think, really does make a difference, especially if, like me, um, you know, you, you, you like to hammer with the, uh, with, with the sheath on, on the axe. I, I do like to do that, and I, I'd, be kind of, I'd be hesitant to do that with, without a welt. If you're going to hammer with the pole, you really do want a welt. Um, so I might add one. It wouldn't be difficult. Um, these cap rivets come off extremely easily. Um, you could use a butter knife, just kind of get it under there and pop it out. And then the stitching, the, once something is already stitched with the holes cut, it is so trivial to just redo that stitching. Um, so trivial. So, um, but one thing I did want to highlight, oh, the other, that's right. I asked, I asked the company where their sheaths are made. This is by email before I even re received the axes. And I said, hey, y'all, I always get some questions about the masks. Where do, where, where are they manufactured? And he said, oh, well, they're made in Lithuania. And I thought that is incredible because on the packing sheet, the specification sheet, they tell you right, right there. And, and that, that is, that makes me so happy because to have a company that says, Here's where our stuff is made. Here's what it's made out of. Um, to me, that says we are proud of our product. We are proud of the materials that we use. And we are so proud of those two things that we want you to know about it. Um, because our investment in quality materials is, is a selling point of our acts. Here you go. I usually have to do so much research to figure out where the sheaths are made, what steels the axe head made out of, what's the handle made out of, where do they source their handles, um, you know, what hardness do they, um, do, do they shoot for in, in their heat treatment. I mean, all of that. I usually, I sometimes can spend hours on old forums and new forums and trade articles and just all over, just all kinds of, I do a deep, deep dive into this stuff. And, you know, just to have a specification sheet right here, it's, that, that, that makes me, indescribably happy. Now, um, I want to figure out how thick this mask is compared to, am I on millimeters or inches? Okay, millimeters. All right. So let's see, that is 3.16 millimeters. Um, so this is, I would say, this is seven ounce leather. This is seven ounce leather. That's very thick very high quality. Um, your standard belt um, weight, we call it weight of leather, is between eight and nine ounces, and that's three and a half millimeters. Um, one and a half to two millimeters is four to five ounce. So at three point, well, let's see, maybe I'm going to try a couple different that's, and, and this would be compressed, so I would expect that to be thinner. The, the, the strap might be, might be the best place to measure it here. Yeah, so this is going to be, 
I'm gonna call this seven ounce leather, which is awesome for an Axe mask. Uh, that is uh, that is just perfect. Um, but let's compare it to let's compare it to Grand's Force <laughs> just for fun. Two point four. So this is I'm gonna say this is probably six ounce leather. Two point four six. And then actually this side is thinner than this side. I can see it. That's 2.27. So yeah, this is probably probably six ounce, ounce leather. Um, now, th this is huge. This is the Arvika sheath uh, mask. Uh, so I just want to compare. This is just for fun here. You know, that's 3.89. So, th <laughs> so this, is, this is 10 ounce leather. I mean, I... <laughs> What one thing that one thing Holtzbrook does absolutely nail is their their masks. I believe these are made in North Carolina, but I mean, t ten ounce leather for for a mask is phenomenal. I mean, that's that's incredible. Now, um, Bison, I believe, if I recall correctly, Bison has their sheaths made in Spain. Uh, Three point one two. So that's yep, yep. That's right about that. Um, seven ounce leather so we've got seven ounce we've got uh seven ounce and um where did i put my where did i put that other mask um regardless we've got uh we've got very very good thickness um on these masks just just excellent the only thing i would add i, I think i would add a i would i would want a, a welt um i would really suggest um, suggest doing that if you are purchasing this axe or, um, and, and it's an easy way to get into leather work or, or maybe, you know, even if the company would kind of modify this mask, uh, this mask, even it, it, Grants Force sheaths are notoriously lagging in quality behind their competitors. I forgot I have this council tool mask here and I haven't 3.95. Wow. Okay. So this this council tool mask is actually the same thickness as the Holtzbrook. That is, you know, and one thing I will say, 10 ounce leather is not cheap. It is expensive. Um, a lot of these leather products are expensive enough that you can't uh, purchase the materials. Most products, you can purchase the materials and manufacture something that you want to just do it yourself cheaper than you could purchase uh, a sheath. If you had to purchase all of these materials, just the way leather is, you, you'd spend just about the same or more just in materials to purchase this sheath on your own. Um, so that that is impressive. Um, just to say, very good quality masks. Uh, I love the design. I, I love the uh, I love just the aesthetics of this axe. Um, I love this profile. Three SSUs is a very capable splitting pattern. Um, so I'm excited to test these axes out. If you have any specific questions or you want to see me do anything in particular with these axes, uh, just let me know down in the comments. Um, I hope this video was helpful. I hope more people look at Adler. Um, they're a wonderful company. They, I think, deserve more recognition and exposure. I'd like to see them succeed. Um, so thanks for watching if you got this far, and I'll see you next time.